I'm gonna get some heat for this, but I don't care. Come at me, Samsung fans. Give me everything you've got because this is completely indefensible. I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra for nearly a month now, and at first I loved Samsung's It's Definitely Not a Note flagship phone. It seemed to have everything going for it. However, things quickly turned sour, and I've had to make this video. I didn't want to make it. I was going to make a follow-up video where I give this a thorough kind of follow-up review, but I've just had enough of the performance issues, and I want to talk about it. I know Samsung fans aren't going to like this video, but... If you just give me a few minutes of your time, I'll explain everything. I'm actually on your side, and I think Samsung is letting you down big time. In fact, if I was a long-term Samsung fan, I'd be furious about the situation. So over the weekend, we decided to get the barbecue out and have our very first outdoor eating experience of the year. We live in the UK. It's you know, This time of the year is pretty special for us Brits. And while turning my lovingly prepared chicken wings on the grill, I've got no footage of this, by the way, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. But while I was doing this, the Doobie Brothers came on Spotify, which was playing through the Samsung S22 Ultra. And it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to do a little addition to my Instagram story for the day. And what I wanted to do was zoom into the feast in front of me and back out again in time with the music. And more specifically, I wanted to do it just as the drum fill comes in after that unmistakable guitar intro. So I grabbed my S22 Ultra, went into Instagram, started a new story composition, and then pulled down the control center thing from the top of the screen. From there, I hit back on the Doobie Brothers track and nothing happened. They just carried on playing, even though on the screen it went back to the start of the track. It was just, for some reason, that touch had been registered, but the track carried on playing. So I hit it again a few times, swore a little bit, and eventually it started again. Now I had mere seconds to get back to that story composition in Instagram to get the timing right with my shot. So having hit the back button successfully, I went back into Instagram. That took a second or so. I then tried to film my little zoom into my chicken wings on the grill, and it just fell into this horrible, awful world of slowness, jitteriness, if I can say the word, and just, yeah, it just started running like an absolute dog. Now, this is just one example of what it's like to live with the S22 Ultra on a daily basis. Now, the barbecue incident was probably the worst I've experienced so far, but it follows weeks of dealing with sluggish, jittery performance in both the OS and also across multiple apps on this phone. And to be honest, it's why I constantly reach for the iPhone SE rather than this much more expensive S22 Ultra. This offers such an unsatisfying user experience that I'm finding myself reaching for this much cheaper iPhone SE. I'm getting to the point of ownership with this phone where I just don't want to touch it anymore. That doesn't say much for a phone that cost me £1,149, does it? Now, if any Samsung or Android fans are still watching, I'd guess that they're probably already preparing their comments. That's fine, but I need to reiterate something before they get too sweaty and furious, which is the fact that this has nothing to do with Android, and it also has nothing to do with the fact that I am generally an iPhone user. As I've noted on multiple occasions, I'm a massive fan of Android these days. I love the newfound fluidity, the graphical style, and even the fact that most manufacturers of Android phones seem to be respecting Google's best wishes. It is absolutely on a par with iOS. These operating systems are both as good as each other. I really, really like Android. That won't be enough for the Samsung crew, unfortunately, and I know this because despite the fact I explicitly stated that Samsung was fast becoming one of my favorite smartphone manufacturers during my initial review of this S22 Ultra, I still got lambasted for being an Apple fanboy. That aside, seriously guys, just listen to what I'm saying. Try and watch the entire video. I wanna make it abundantly clear that the issues I have with the S22 Ultra have nothing to do with Android or the fact that I am an iPhone user most of the time. I feel better now, but I can guarantee I still get trolled. Just watch. So why is the S22 Ultra so useless? Here's the rub. If you buy your S22 Ultra in the UK, like I did, or in Europe, you'll end up with a phone that's powered by Samsung's own Exynos 2200 chip. Now, having lived with this chip for nearly two months, I can confirm that it is totally, utterly, biblically crap. 
Now, if you live anywhere else, you'll end up with an S22 Ultra that runs the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. Now, I've experienced that chip in the brilliant Oppo Find X5 Pro phone, which I reviewed a little while ago. I'll leave a link to that above. And I can confirm that that chip is utterly, totally, biblically great. This isn't fair. In the UK and Europe, we pay the exact same amount for the S22 Ultra as everyone else, but this one comes powered by steam. Everyone else gets the full fat, fully specced Snapdragon version, which, as I've heard on the grapevine, is really pretty good. I just cannot believe that more tech reviewers aren't making a bigger deal about this, hence this video. So the reason I'm so dismayed with the S22 Ultra doesn't just relate to the price, it's because the rest of the phone is just utterly brilliant. In fact, I'd go as far to say it's the best smartphone I've ever owned when it comes to screen quality, design, battery life, and that brilliant camera. Even the S Pen, which I don't personally use that often, it's just a lovely bit of icing on the cake, and it just makes the whole thing a little bit more special. But the S22 Ultra, if bought in the UK or Europe, performs horribly. You know, scrolling through Twitter shouldn't be this kind of jittery, unsatisfying experience, nor should scrolling through Google News when you swipe left from the home screen or swipe right, whatever it is, that is just, again, a very unsatisfying experience on this phone. I challenge any ardent Samsung fan to tell me otherwise. This isn't a new problem, but I had no idea about these differing chipsets and how this dim-witted strategy from Samsung has plagued their distribution of S-series phones across the globe. Why a company with such deep resources can't give everyone the same chip is completely beyond me. They do it with everything else. It's the same screen, the same design, obviously. Everything else about the phone is, as far as I'm aware, identical no matter where you buy it. It's just the most important part of it, which is the chip, that differs. But it's actually the Samsung fans I feel sorry for. And yeah, they'll probably already be commenting down below and calling me an idiot, but I genuinely feel sorry for them because their favorite smartphone manufacturer is doing them a disservice. In fact, it continues to make these S-series phones a bit of a laughing stock in certain regions. And again, that is completely unfair because they are really, really good phones. Now, Samsung has issued two OS updates since I've had the S22 Ultra, and neither of them have made any difference whatsoever, which to me confirms that the Exynos 2200 is the bag of crap I thought it was. I've not been this angry about a product, as you can probably tell, since I bought Apple's 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for my AirPods, which is ludicrously overpriced and absolutely awful. But I'd love to hear your experience. So if you are an S22 Ultra in the UK or Europe, for instance, like me, and you have the Exynos version, is your experience similar to mine? Equally, if you're in another part of the world and you have the full fat Snapdragon version, how good is it? Get involved in the comments and let's try and keep this civil because we're all in this together. I just want these manufacturers to make great devices no matter where you buy them. It's not fair that in the UK and Europe we get a useless version of the S22 Ultra. Now, if you want to see my full reaction to the Snapdragon chip, keep watching for a link to my Oppo Find X5 Pro review. Thanks for watching, guys.